In the earlier models, we looked at the conventional techniques for evaluating phosphorus in solids, phosphorus risk, phosphorus storage. And now we move on in module four to some of the, the use of the more recent developments in techniques for evaluating phosphorus release and storage in soils. <coughs> so at the end of the module, we, had, we will understand the concept of the P-saturation ratio, relate PSR or the P-saturation ratio to isotherm parameters. Isotherm parameters were what was one of the more conventional techniques that we have used understand how the soil pea storage capacity is calculated from the PSR and how this new field test for phosphorus could be related to water soluble P and soil test P. And finally, we will also wind up by figuring out how we can use the new test to evaluate existing information or the information that we have actually discussed in some of the earlier modules. We now look at the degree of P saturation and the P saturation ratio, and we'll go briefly into the theory and calculation of these two parameters. What is the degree of P saturation? The degree of P saturation, often known as DPS, is the percentage of releasable P in a soil and the P retention capacity of the soil. And in this case, or in many of the cases, we use aluminum plus iron as a surrogate for P retention in acid soils. Now the equation, that is the degree of P saturation equation, includes an alpha factor, which accounts for the fraction of iron and aluminum responsible for P sorption for soils of a given region. So how do we calculate DPS? DPS is simply the ratio of uh, extractable P divided by extractable iron and aluminum with an alpha factor in the denominator multiplied by 100 and multiplication by 100 is just to calculate from a mole to a percentage and the extractable P can be uh, the extractable solution uh, represents extractable P, iron, and aluminum in solution. Now, let us look at the alpha factor. Remember, we mentioned that the alpha factor is representative for different soils. For the Dutch soils, the alpha factor is 0.4 to 0.6. German soils, it was about 0.48. For Delaware soils, we had 0.68. For Canadian soils, the value was 0.66. And for Florida spotted soils, the value was obtained as 0.55. Now look at it, they are all pretty close somewhere around 0.5. And therefore, several recent uh, studies or more, more recent studies use an alpha factor of 0.5, irrespective of where the soils are obtained, because calculation of these alpha factors is a time-consuming job. Now, what are the extractants we can use for DPS calculations? Well, you can use an oxalate extractant, a malic-1 extractant, or a malic-3 extractant. These extracting procedures are explained in Module 1, Lectures 2 and 3. So DPS can therefore be calculated from P, iron, and aluminum in any of the above extractants. Question then arises, why DPS? Simple explanation is that a soil test P such as malic 1 or malic 3, does not take into account the ability of a soil to retain P. The DPS was first introduced in the Netherlands, where P leaching is a major problem. Their soils are sandy, just like ours. 
the extractable soil pea, iron and aluminum was determined in an oxalate solution. The Dutch consider a critical pea saturated for a soil when DPS equals 25%. So 25% DPS for the Netherlands uh, studies will likely result in groundwater pea concentration above the 0.1 milligrams P per liter standard. This is the DPS standard for the Netherlands. Next, what is the P saturation ratio? We have just uh, talked about it. The P saturation ratio is simply a ratio and it does not include an alpha factor that's used in the P DPS calculations. So PSR is simply a ratio of extractable P divided by extractable iron and aluminum. And the solutions, of course, these parameters can be determined in an oxalate, malic 1 or malic 3 solution. As we have already talked about, since alpha has to be computed for soils of a given region, it is easier to use PSR for more practical purposes. Now the question is, which is a preferred extractant? Well, the oxalate extractant was the first one to be used for DPS, PSR calculations. However, oxalate extractions are difficult to perform. If you recall, in module one, lecture three, we had moved, gone through the procedure. It is a procedure which has to be whether salt solution has to be shaken for four hours and the whole experiment done in the dark, unlike what we can do for malic one and malic three. So <clears throat> the modifications were then based on STPs used in various parts of the US, right? Uh, malic one extracts, you have used, um, there are a couple of them, uh, Beck and others, and also Naira and others used malic one extractants. Malic three, you also have McGuire and Sims, Sims et al. and Naira et al. Now, if you remember, or if you, um, malic one was our salt test, Florida salt test solution, so some importance was given to malic one in earlier studies. Today, Medic 3 is Florida's soil test solution. One thing we need to understand here is the concept of the mole. When we calculate a sum of metals, that is when we calculate iron plus aluminum, the summation has to be done in moles, not in milligrams per kilogram. So P moles is P divided by 31. Iron in moles is equals to iron divided by 56 to bring it to milligrams per kilogram. And for aluminum, it'll be aluminum concentration divided by 27. So to bring it to milligrams per kilogram. So the PSR equals P divided by 31 and then the whole thing is divided by iron by 56 plus aluminum divided by 27, where P, iron, and aluminum, the equation, are expressed in milligrams per kilogram. All right, you put it in milligrams per kilogram divided by 31, 56, or 27, and what you get as an output is in milligrams per kilogram. But the, but the whole equation now becomes a ratio because milligrams per kilogram in the upward part of the equation and the lower part of the equation will cancel. So now we are talking about a simple ratio of P to iron and aluminum. Now let's take a look at the change point concept. What we are doing here is plotting water soluble P that's on the y axis against the PSR for a population of soils. And what we notice here, there is a change in the slope of the curve that's referred to as the change point. The change point we refer to is the threshold PSR value. 
because what we notice is above the threshold PSR, the water soluble P increases abruptly. This change point in this particular diagram is shown about at, at about 0.1 PSR, and we will deal with actual numbers in a later lecture. Let us now look at the difference between STP and PSR. And let us consider two soils with the same malic 1P. Example, 25 milligrams per kilogram. Of course, we can consider two soils with the same malic 3P solution also. These two soils will have different iron and aluminum concentrations. I've just given soil 1 and soil 2 with arbitrary values for iron and aluminum. So the PSR of soil 1 can be calculated based on the earlier developed equation, P divided by iron plus aluminum, and you get a value of 0.192. Note, this is above the threshold PSR of 0.1 we noticed we in the earlier slide. PSR of soil 2 is calculated the same way, and now we have a value of 0 0.053. Note that this value is below the threshold PSR of 0.1. So this soil, which is soil 2, does not pose an environmental risk, whereas soil 1 poses an environmental P risk. Now you understand the concept of the PSR and why it is important and has more value than a soil test P, such as Malik 1 or Malik 3, as far as environmental P risk is concerned. Now, we have a whole lot of references here. The references I have cited already in the, in the various slides. So these references will provide additional information on the DPS PSR concept. Just remember that in many of the earlier references, it is mentioned, the mention is always DPS, and the more recent ones are the ones where we have used PSR in place of DPS. The references continue in this slide. 